September meeting of the Hadley Committee uh, for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, we have a quorum. Joanne will be joining us momentarily. I guess this is technically calling to order. And then we roll into opening reflections. Does anyone, which is kind of like our version of when your mom says, give me three good things today. And <laughs> I thought if we opened and closed on any reflections that we wanted to, uh, so I, I could probably steal everyone's thunder and say, we're excited to have Crystal join us. Thank yeah. you, I appreciate it. We really do. Thank right. you so much. I feel very honored to be sitting on this board. Well, we started Three years ago? Yes, maybe. I think it was August the 20th. And wow. no one wanted to be, we were all just kind of new to municipal committees. No one wanted to lead, no one wanted, so Wayne stepped up and Wayne took on the chair. He said, oh, you know, and no one stepped up for clerk or secretary. And I said, well, I'll do it until someone steps up. And I said, yeah. I think we were the only two men. Uh, here we are, two That's old right. white men. <laughs> you know, so how diverse can you get? So anyway, we uh, we muddled through. Actually, our first year was we felt hamstrung by we didn't really understand the restrictions. You know, and we you know we were given all this fear about violating the open meeting law. And so we felt like we couldn't do anything between our monthly meetings. And yeah, I, I think we were a little frustrated yeah. until we finally just realized that, you know, you can break of the subcommittees, you can work in between open meetings as long as you don't have a lot of So if we had less than half people working on something, they could communicate all they want. Mm -hmm. But our first, Yes. Yes. How many months we were all like, and yes. Wayne would put a put words to our frustration about the vision of doing so much. And here we are just trying to figure out what do we started with our mission yeah, and did. vision, and, and uh, we've come a long way. We have a, we have a web presence. I don't know if you saw that or not. Tell them. Well, I have another reflection. Yes. When you asked, like, what, you know, good thing happened to you today, I went to the inauguration of the new president oh, at Mount Holyoke College. Um, wow. The first black woman president in Holyoke. Wow. And it was. So moving, so beautiful, spectacular. Uh, former law school dean at Howard, oh, wow. and um, well, that's her father spoke. Yes. I mean, just magnificent. The students kept chanting, "Dr. Holly." They were so excited. She just seems amazing. Wow. Um, and I, Joanne is a, a yeah. graduate, uh, an alum of, of Mount Holyoke, so I knew you would be especially appreciative. I also wanted to share that um, there was a blessing. Um, there was a call to order and land acknowledgement. And uh, Larry Spotted Crow Man um, actually offered a beautiful reflection. And um, I thought you might like to know about uh, him. Yeah. And so I copied um, mm. a bio from his website. Oh, nice. And... Um, it was it was beautiful. It was just beautiful, very inspiring, and um, mm. our neighbors really. So it 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 was True. it was just great. And I know that we have a commitment to um, elevating the experience of Indigenous people. And mm -hmm. so I thought that um, this individual could be a resource for us. Uh, Yes, that's a great idea. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on with it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's nice. Nice. very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
All right. We'll roll on into business then. Item three is the clerk's report, the last minutes. Everybody should have a copy. Well, I read through it and did not see any minutes, and I so move that we accept these minutes. Uh, I was like, can I tag a lower to contain that I can second today? All in favor? All I opposed? Move. None. We unanimously accept the impeccable minutes of our inspirational <laughs> secretary. <laughs> um, thank you again, Pat. I um, was secretary person two years. Wow. How does it feel to uh, walk through the second I was burning out. Are you? Yeah. yeah. But then you became the chair, Mark. So well, <laughs> that then you said, I'm going to be a well, spy for now. Well, really give that the truth that it deserves. We all came back with the third year. We all came back with the third year. Or we were getting ready. And what, I think Pat he emailed us all and said, you know, it's time to ask to be reappointed. And you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think basically what she heard from most everyone was we were we were burnt out. We didn't have bandwidth. And basically we were all gonna it was gonna dissolve. And when we heard everyone else was ready to pull back, we all stepped up again. <laughs> yeah. And said we just need to scale back our expectations. We don't burn out. And uh, so I was like, okay. And then Pat, who should run for office, is very persuasive on the standing okay. Would you be chair? And I said, she said, I'll do all the work. <laughs> oh, so I can take the credit? Okay. <laughs> but you never take the credit. No. And so I am a figurehead. My, I, I just got married the end of July, and my oh, okay. husband, my wife's cousin gave us a T-shirt that I wear proudly at home that says uh, "Trophy Husband." Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> wonderful! That is amazing. I love it. I love it. That's so, yeah, I'm just a figure here. So, <laughs> that being said, we will go on to item four: old business. Senior Center Diversity Equity Movie Matinee is coming up next month, October 20th. Um, you want to say more about that, Pat? Or sure. sure. And, and also for you, Crystal, we, um, we have celebrated Indigenous People Day in the month of October in the past. And so, um, and we have also partnered with the Senior Center show various films and BDI issues. So we were invited to choose a film for October 23 and discussed what kind of film we would like to show. And Violet, the program director of the Senior Center, said she was using a theme around the world or an international yeah. theme for October. So we discussed it and decided that we would keep our commitment to Indigenous people, but maybe go beyond the United States. And if you could find a film that was set in North America on Indigenous people, we would choose that. So we came up with a few and put them out there. And then a um, few of us watched them and then landed on this particular movie, which is a movie about Indigenous people in Northern Canada. Right. So we stuck with the theme. And um, it's an hour and, and 32 minutes. And... Um, Initially, I thought I could attend, and I've always been able to attend, but I have a memorial service that day, oh. so I cannot attend. So we need someone to attend and um, just welcome people, and then we usually bring some sort of sweet bread, muffins, cookies, and then people can make tea uh, right there at the senior center. So it's a Friday, it's at 12.30, and it's October 20th. Into so Violet had just asked me, will somebody be able to attend? And I said, I, I think so. We would, I think, 
I know for, for those of you who work, that's hard. I, I'm retired, Crystal, so I have more flexibility. I so I I'm usually the one who says that, that she can do it. So Alex? If you're me of a date, remind me the date and yeah. time. I, I, sure. I, it's I, October um, 20th at 1230. It's a Friday. Great, because you're helping me out my grad school stuff. I got to walk. I got to. Um, go to like art galleries or screenings. So okay, perfect opportunity. Wonderful. It's a very interesting film. And um, did you watch the whole? Watch about half of it. And yeah, I had to stop. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's powerful. It, it really shows the impact of hydroelectric power <gasps> on. Oh yes. Oh. And yeah. um, and so it's it's um, it's. First of all, we have a big screen in the senior center, and this is a movie for a big screen yeah, because right. it's it's beautifully filmed, yeah. um, but it's very sad. Right. And um, most topics do I have conditions to watch. That's right. You just have to expect it going in, so you can see the undertone and appreciate the film itself. Yes, exactly. exactly. Being educated, being informed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we the town has a. Um, conservation agent, a, a new person, uh, because I was looking for someone who might attend and talk about the impact um, of, of hydroelectric power. I couldn't find anyone, but this um, person whose name is Kayla Lubrell uh, said she would be in the audience if there was, she, she's not an expert in the area, and then I know that some of you know from Hadley Learns, Will. Yeah. Yeah, Vandenhauer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he, he's actually a graduate student in um, biology, environment. He has an undergrad degree in environmental science. I invited him to come too. I so know. I thought at the end, if, if somebody who would be there would just say, does anybody have any thoughts? I don't think we're going to have any expertise in the room. But mm -hmm. so the job is to attend the movie welcome people, show the film, Violet will set it up for you, and then just say, you know, any thoughts, anything we should consider, maybe a future talk, because again, I don't think we have any expertise, but um, one of the things that, that Will said to me is, he, he watched the film, he said it really illustrated for him the need to have many people at the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think the decision is a good one, and it's because you don't have everyone at the table. So he thought that was a number mm -hmm. one point, mm -hmm. which I thought was excellent. Mm -hmm. And then he also pulled some articles from the Gazette that I'm happy to pass on to you about solar power mm -hmm. and um, the impact on, on forested, forests. Yeah. So he, that's another issue, right? So he, he, I hope he can come. He's very busy. But if he can come, I think he could get some good conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking too much. But anyway, that mm -hmm. That's <laughs> what we have set up. So if somebody wants to maybe volunteer to come or... Can you spell Kayla's last name? Sure. It's L-O-U-B-R-I-E-L. Thank you. And she's going to bring some material just about conservation. And she said, you know, she would love to do it. So I can... I work at, at those hours. But what I can do is put in a request to have that time... Uh, deducted from my day so I can come, attend, give a little bit of extra, and then go back to work. So I can find that out tomorrow when I go in. Uh, you said it starts at 12.30 and it's for an hour and a half. I would say I can leave from 12 to 2 mm -hmm. or 12 to 2.30. This way I'm not taking too much from my job and I'm also helping out the community. So we'll, I can let everyone know tomorrow. That that's and I'll plan to be there, too. And you're going to be there as well? Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Okay. I don't know yet. So I just... Okay. I was trying to block it out in my work calendar so that okay. nobody books me into a meeting then. I usually wouldn't have agreed to a date, but, you know, the memorial service is... Yeah. Yeah. I don't have no control over no, that. Right. So. Of course. I you appreciate have to go. everybody. Yes. It doesn't come around then. That's right. Yeah, no. Exactly. So, okay. Well, thank you. So... So I have you down, Mark, and then Crystal. You want to see what you can yes. do. Okay, but Mark, are you a definite? Um, yes, I'm a 95% except for unforeseen. Okay. Expected. Godly events. Yeah. Hurricane yeah. events. Okay. okay, thank you.
No. Uh, next item is development of questions for the HR director. And, um, and we mentioned that at the last meeting, but I don't think we got into it. Um, and for, <clears throat> for Crystal, the Hadley, um, maybe a year and a half ago, we surveyed a number of organizations. I know we went to some the different um, organizations in the in the community. So we we someone spoke to the school, someone spoke to churches, um, and someone spoke to the police, and someone spoke to the HR in at the uh, town hall. And the Hadley went through a turnover. Their, their HR person was, I think he was called to duty or something. And then when he came back, he, you know, I don't know how long he stayed, but then he left. So now they, and then they had an acting HR person. And I think someone retired from Amherst. And so Troy has been there for, I'd say maybe from this summer. Mm -hmm. Maybe higher in the spring or summer. So he hasn't been there that long. And I did stop in to see him maybe two, three months ago to see if he would be interested in um, coming to meet with us and uh, answer questions. And he said, absolutely. Uh, what he asked was that if we had any specific questions, we could prepare those in advance so that he'd have some time to mm -hmm. um, prepare his answers in case he didn't know them off the top of his head to you know and, uh, and then he could answer other questions spontaneously but uh, so that's been our on our agenda for a month now to um come up with any questions that we would like to send to the hadley hr when you say hadley hr human relations there that's what yeah, it was yeah, but i didn't know hadley had a human yeah, we, I don't know. I think it was fairly new in the last so. three to five years. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I should, have, I should review the talk we had with the previous guy because I remember him talking about how many town employees there are okay. and that it was high yeah. time we had one. We have an HR director. Yeah. Because right now I just, I'm sort of feeling like I don't even really know what an HR person does or Thank what you. I would want to ask. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that comes to mind for me, which is one of our early on questions, is what if we get our web presence and what if someone comes to us with a grievance? What, you know, we don't have any authority. So what we thought was we would, uh, and correct me if I'm, misspeaking, but I think we said we would advocate for that we would direct them to HR and advocate to you know help them find other resources. Um, and that's ultimately our goal I mean, hopefully doesn't come to any grievances, but that's probably being idealistic. Um, so he's he's willing to sit down with all of us in a meeting. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That I what sort of strikes me in the idea of brainstorming is there's hiring, right? The human yeah. resources person does probably hire is involved in any hiring in the town. Yeah. It's, you don't have a lot of employees, but I would imagine HR would be involved in that. And then training. And I guess I would put our lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion on those two activities. Mm. You know, do they advertise jobs in places that will, you know, in publications that might attract a more diverse pool of candidates? Mm. Number yeah. one, for hiring. And then when people are hired, is there any diversity kind of training that occurs? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's a good start. Yes, it's really, really, that's, that's great. I, and I should, um, I don't know if I should, but I will note our one run in with, with town on this was when 
one of the select board members uh, made a comment on her social media um, against the movement or effort to convert the Connell Lodge to affordable housing. And we all personally took offense at her disparaging comments about what, you know, basically saying, if your income is lower, then you're you're not quality people. I mean, <laughs> she'll get your head out of your, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and so we took we took offense, and uh, we drafted a letter uh, that we all signed on and sent it. Uh, I and I delivered it to the town manager, and uh, immediately within a week, um, she went and found a. Mm, uh, a statewide sample of municipal workplace ethics. And well, I shouldn't say just workplace, but because with social media, it goes out beyond. It. And they instituted, you know, they, she tweaked it, she brought it to the select board, they adopted it within a month. Wow. So, the yeah. code of ethics, it should be on the workplace. Yep. Yes. That's like, yeah. yeah. Somewhere on the town website, it should. So it was an unfortunate situation, but we felt like that's why we came to it for those kind of you know, those kinds of. You know, we were hoping to be fostering more diversity, not calling out the you know, negatives, but trying to add to the positives. But mm -hmm. anyway, that's part of our. Sometimes the negative is what creates positive. Without that negative, then the letter would have never went out. The yeah. ethics code would not been produced. On the yeah. So I guess yeah. it was a, it was in a way a very revealing path that we yeah. all had to. Oh yeah. In, in so yeah, yeah, it was great. And what was um, if I might say, I didn't so much take offense to the comment. I wanted to ask some. That speaking of thinking of Annie McKenzie's meeting with us, I wanted to ask her, could you clarify what you meant by that? Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out, I wanted to dig a little deeper Good. because mm -hmm. you could read it the way that when you said disparaging, you could read it that way. And personally, I think it probably was. <laughs> but when you try to engage people to open up and tell me more about your perspective, mm -hmm. sometimes you can find common ground. Somewhere, but there was no interest in it. So, so now there's the code of conduct. So now if something else comes up, there's a little bit better channel to to discuss to follow. Up. Well, I don't know if there's better if any discussion would happen, but but um, I remember this this made the newspaper. Yeah. So it, it it all this drama going on, but now there's there's a procedure or or at least a. Um, but we should probably get a copy of that and refer to it again. But, you know, if someone does that, here's what we do about it. Right. And, and, and it may not mm -hmm. happen. But. That was what I remember from the quote. Yeah. Yeah. In crime and crap. When was you said this was how you got? You're not there. Okay. It's in a minute. So May post was a May um, social media post. So in May 2021. So it was in the paper. That was last year. May of 2022. Yeah. This person posted this on their personal Facebook page. Oh, I think so. It was in the paper too. The, the newspaper caught up the story that that people noticed this comment. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, and I I subscribe to the local paper, so I do read. You know what's going on. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting show. Mostly these days is the Northampton Main Street. Tell me about it. <laughs> but sometimes there's a report from the planning board. Yes. And Mark is on several different committees, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades. Just this and the planning board. And because I'm on the planning board, I'm the representative on the community preservation. Oh, I wondered about that. And I all read my, that in paper, too. And all three aligned this week, so I had 
I had community preservation Monday night. I had planning board Tuesday night. I worked till 1230 last night at work <laughs> and I had business tonight. And tomorrow I'll maybe tip back a cold one. No, oh, they were not the weekend. That was your calendar. <laughs> so, do we have any more? I think you're right. How do we? How does he approach hiring? Um, is there anything we could ask? Um, is there anything we could offer? We could ask. Yeah, right. Um, I think I'd certainly ask him to tell him more about your position and your responsibilities. I know what I want to ask, but I don't know if I should. I want to know, I mean, I'm sure that they do a Corey background check, but do they, you know, Google their social media tweets and whatever? I don't, I'm not on social media, so I don't know, but it's, I mean, I'm sure I, we warn our kids, don't say something you wouldn't want printed in the newspaper on your, you know, do they, do they do that? Is that standard these days? Because it could, I don't know. And you feel you can't ask that question? I don't know. Is it appropriate? I'm just not sure. I mean, I think it's part of the process is in this day and age, a lot of employers do that. They check the social media mm -hmm. um, because you can say one thing on your application and your resume. However, your free speech with your friends and so forth shows who you truly are. So I do believe that they, a lot of employers do look at the social media to pick up information about that person. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's acceptable to ask, but it is part of employers. Yeah. I guess you might clarify why you want to know that. I guess I'm not saying you need to I guess me. if they did, I, or you know, maybe we can or I can craft my question. If they did that, what would procedure be? Would you say we've seen this and this in your postings? Do you have a problem with our code of conduct you know, is that going to be a challenge for reason. you because we see things that are would be a violation are you you know do you feel you know, here's what the salary is and do you have a problem yes you know putting a muffle on it you know right i see what you're saying right as we know the stories we see in the paper now where people who are already elected and then people find things that they say, and now it becomes big news. Well, I mean, what if you had two or three candidates that, you know, the hiring committee was torn between, and you just went by by what, what it has on paper, and you chose candidate, you know, B. And then if you didn't do that meta search, whatever it's called, you might offer them the position and the month, six months, a year down the line, it all blows up, and you've lost those other candidates. You know they're already. You know, so it might be a worth a long term investment to find out to kick the tires before you buy the car. You know to say, is this going to be a problem? Oh no, no, that was just I had too much to drink that night, or you know, they'll have an excuse. I don't. Know. <laughs> Also to make aware the town of these actions. So this way, if they are hired and then down the road this comes out, the town is now going to be responsible as well because they hired this person. And it is up to the town to make sure doing the background check that everything checks out properly and not, not overlook things. Because again, who you hire to work for your company represents you. Yeah. So if you're hiring someone and down the line, you know, something comes out that's really bad, how does that make happy? It's not a good look. Yeah. Um, that's a, I think that would be a great question. And like like you said, you just have to vet it properly. Yeah. And I would go a little deeper than the question is what I have to do. I wonder if when it comes to hiring, if the HR person actually gets involved in that kind of interview and might be might it be let's say they need to have a new teacher in the school. I'll bet that Annie McKenzie of the school do that kind of screening. So that's what I kind of want to know. What exactly is this what is his what are his responsibilities job description? Right. I mean I guess I'd be asking you, do you 
do you have a diversity hat that you put on and you scrub through looking for those issues because you're you're putting your right. you know your basic job description is you're checking to see if they're qualified if their references are good is this on that list of checks you know you're, yeah. you're looking for a criminal background you know yeah is this yeah. so this conversation reminds me reminded me of our of our statement, our charge. So I went to the website, our, <laughs> our, our website, yeah. and yeah. Um, the, C the CDEI was charged to advise, promote, and foster the development of policies, programs, and activities directed towards anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? So we're supposed to be promoting um, practices, right, and policies that you would think HR, an HR person mm -hmm. might have, explore, develop, and make recommendations for strategies related to issues of anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion for residents and workers within the town, right. hiring practices, recruitment strategies, training, continuing education, and professional development. Oh, there you go. Right, so we could pull this, I think, from- There you go. Yeah, you know, start with that. Before, but people were raising things, and I'm like, oh, I think we- Yeah, I, I think our charge is thinking about, about that, that too, me. because it's- that's, I think that's Sarah. You said we already had brought in someone from the trial before. Yeah, the guy that was working for us before who left pretty yeah, shortly I'm after we not remembering he was that a well. veteran. Yeah. He himself was a veteran. Oh, and yeah. He was actually in, and, and he had I think he was in the National Guard or something. National Guard and he left to, because he was called into he service, was called right? Called to active. Yeah. 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 And then so, he came back and we had our conversation with him, which should be on the town's YouTube page somewhere. Yeah. And, and I would venture to say within three, four months after he returned, he left. Yeah. 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 Want, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think so. I, I think maybe the next step is for us to individually maybe go to the website and come up with questions. And then yeah. if people want to send me the questions, I'll compile them okay. for the next meeting. Is that okay? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. New business, 5A, Stirring the Ashes, Porter Phillips Huntington Museum. This is an event on Saturday. This Saturday. We'll be covering it. You'll be covering it? Yeah. yeah. I would like to be there, but I have an obligation to be at Foxborough Stadium with my wife celebrating her 55th birthday. Yeah, we need to do that. And listening to Billy Joel and Steve okay. with a few other people. Okay. On my mask on. But yeah. I'm hoping more of you can, and that it sounded like a. I am planning to go. Do you remember what the gist? I mean, the name. Yes, does, yeah. Yes. There, it, was it the slavery is, history or something? What What they're going to do, as I understand it, is they are honoring um, people who were enslaved at that location. Yes. And they're going to. Uh, they're saying stirring the ashes, but I think one of the one of the things that will be done is a plaque. In honor of individuals yeah. who had been enslaved, I think that's part. They also are looking for readers, and I meant to to call and say I would read. Mm -hmm. They were looking for readers to read a portion of a statement by Frederick Douglass. Oh, right. I, I think that's what I think to we get the Fourth email. of July. I think yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. two things, and it's two to four in that location, and I do want to say that I think. This is an opportunity to do what we want to do, which is to increase connectedness of the CDEI across Hadley, right? That's yeah. one of our goals. And this is an opportunity to do that. We're being invited, yeah. right? Weren't you invited to invite us? I and think we did get that. Yeah, I think I forwarded that. I think you did. Yeah, yeah. that's where I read it. Yeah. yeah, so we we were invited to participate. So if we can attend or read or whatever, I mean, I think I'll try to go. Great. I mean, it is short notice. Yeah, so I will definitely try. I mean, have my grandson is with him, so and he's little. He's he'll be two. Oh, oh, yeah, he's in that. But he's he's wonderful. 
<laughs> he can't be a reader, though. No. No. We'll try. Definitely <laughs> <No. laughs> try. But if not, I would love to go and and actually listen to what's happening and hear more information about that. I was going to say it's an opportunity for us to recruit, but we don't need to recruit. We now have a full committee. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe it's an opportunity for outreach to, you know, maybe hand out a little card to people saying, you know, are you aware of us? Here's our link on the, you know, you check the town website, you can see when our meetings are. And, uh, Do we have any cards for anything to no. no. We don't even have a budget. Oh, I mean, we could request one next year. We could. That would be a good idea to have some type of um, information to hand out. I remember when I was listening to the presentation, I was on the Community Preservation Committee, and there was a presentation to us by uh, the uh, Town Historical Commission. And, they said we don't have a budget. We get, you know, I, I think they, or maybe their annual budget was like three hundred dollars or something. Yeah, we didn't. I was like, yeah, I don't think we do either. We're just a bunch of volunteers. We bake for our, our own events. Mm -hmm. We we had something like, well, like for the Garland team this spring, we had a quarter sheet little thing that we could hand out, and you could yeah. either get them from the person who had the color printer or you could print your own black and white. You just cut it in quarters, cut print, you know, two or three sheets, cut them in quarters. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked us about the team, we'd hand them one of these things. So we could do something like that where you know, just yeah. just a little high where the committee for da da, -da. Mm -hmm. and we have a page on the town website here's how to find it. We meet third Thursday of the month. Get some copies on card stock so it has a little a little study in this tour. Yeah, I mean, you could probably get Jennifer to print a few in the town hall. It's mm -hmm. worth thinking about planting seeds because anytime yeah. Wayne could say, I can't do this, I could say, right. you could say, right. you always want to, it, it'd be great to say, well, we'll have, we'll let you know when there's an opening rather than yeah. we're down to three members and we don't have enough for a form. You know, so well, and there's succession planning. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I think I think we need to think of our future yeah. and, and yeah. to try to cultivate people who want to join this group. So and that in, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly and right. Invite people to come, at least watch, and if they want, to come oh, and right. con and contribute. Mm -hmm. you know? In fact, maybe we should put a little. What's the term? Parking space or just something? Parking uh, lot. We should, we should have a little uh, spot in our agenda each week for public comment. You know, open, you know, invite people to come and right. share with us their joys or their concerns. Oh, great. You know, That's a good idea. Questions or inform us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. This term yeah. parking lot came from if we have a short agenda and we still have 20 minutes, are there some topics that we can pull out that we didn't have time to really get into in one time? When we could explore them more. That I I threw that term out a long time. That's why it's parking. Park 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 park. So just park that here, not forget. <laughs> Don't forget or say no, but just say not now. We'll yeah, we'll get there. Pull, if if we right. You made Next me pull up Google on that one. Is that a typo? Well, Mark is an architect by profession, so I did think it might, must have struck you as very strange, Mark. <laughs> Are the lines painted? Is, is it diagonal? I hope there are solar panels put up above that part. But there aren't people. Hadley to put solar panels on the entire mall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another topic. <laughs> um, anything else on the stirring the ashes? If not, I will move on to. Oh, nice. Jason Burns. Jason Burns, Hopkins head teacher, social, social studies. Yeah, where did he? He wrote to us. That was the email. Yes, yeah. he wrote to us. And, okay. and, 
worked with Mr. Burns, who is a teacher, a, a social studies teacher on an indigenous um, people's project. Was that, that last that was year? Our first year doing it. First year doing it. Yeah, two years and, ago. And his students had a project. Yeah, so and he we, would like to reconnect with us. Yes. And so I asked specifically when, and he said in the spring. Okay. So he would like to connect with us in the spring, and well, the, the project will be in the spring, and he okay. would like to involve more students. Oh, right. That's what he said. We are thinking this spring to expand the scope of the event to involve more students. Wow. So that's another way for us to yeah plant the seed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Young minds are very firm. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We used to have a ten room at our community in the beginning, a teacher from Hawkins. Yeah. Really? As a, I don't think she's a voting member, right? No. She's not a Hadley resident. resident. Not right. a Hadley resident. But we, we we we've lost that. We you know we like Heather now. Connection, as they have. And their she had a student diversity club. Like yeah, she had a student called. that was like the head of their. Oh yeah, club. yeah. And she used to um, join us so, by Zoom. That's right. She probably graduated. But we were all Zooming then. Yeah, we all. Were. Mm -hmm. But there's that historical connection, so that's really good news. That's great. She's um, probably like knowledge. What I remember from the event two years ago was that the library just about ran out of display space for the projects, which was mm. wonderful, mm. but it meant that they couldn't stay up. Mm. The projects could not oh, stay on display to because they were sort of overflowing the space. So I'm wondering if I mean, first of all, we don't know what Jason has planned as a project. Maybe he's taken that already into consideration and is thinking, let's have a project that the library can display. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. is there a place, is there more the display school. space either here in this building or, I mean, the library is a wonderful place to display young people's stuff because they're naturally going to go to the library. They're not naturally necessarily going to come to the right. senior center. Mm -hmm. The senior center is a great place to display stuff that people who wouldn't go into the school or, you know, see, you know, don't probably don't have kids in school anymore, mm -hmm. could see it. But something to think see. about. Mm -hmm. If there's more display space needed, where would that be? I think I've shared one yeah. house. I work at Mass at my, it's my Clark Kent uh, existence. <laughs> and uh, I usually share with you when we get those e-blasts from the Office of Diversity, Equity, mm -hmm. Inclusion, mm -hmm. uh, whichever order they mm -hmm. they might be excited to outreach and you know local students and display them. Mm -hmm. They might say, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll reserve the something gallery on campus, which would get the kids all fired up." Wouldn't that give them a, a bigger stage? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Just just an idea. Town gown. Town gown. Well, and they, UMass just got a grant, a big grant involving um, yeah. indigenous people culture. And mm -hmm. so, yes, that, there might be a, a, a connection. Maybe we could facilitate yes. the connection between Hadley and yeah. UMass because that mm -hmm. Jason Burns event. Yeah. 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 It's a project. Oh, another possibility might be at the mall. So I know I've walked in mm -hmm. to the, the main entrance that's outside, you know, the target on one side, and I feel like on the other side, used to be a best spot. And in that, right in that corridor, there's that big blank wall, and I've seen displays on that of different oh, things. The target is to, to be on it. Target us on one side, and the other side is to the blank like wall. From it. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. talking about where the winter farmer's market was. Yeah, it has been, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. Yeah, it was a few years ago. There was a display. I've, I think I've seen more than one display that was like, oh, this is interesting. Do we want to invite Jason to come to a future meeting so we can sure. talk about great the idea. scope and how we can support? I think that one thing we did is we provided refreshments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, he yeah. did all the education. We didn't do any mm -hmm. of that, but so mm -hmm. should I ask if he's available in October? Sure, I will be coming. 
Great. There is a typo here on the next item. There should be I was a tea. I was wondering. I was going to look it up. Like, yeah, no, there should be a T. Arctic. Amherst College Ge Geologist, Assistant Professor, Friends of the Library, Earth's Climate, Past, Present, and Future Lessons from Antarctica. This is in the lot being advertised in the library. It is somewhat related to the film we're showing, too. Okay. And it precedes the film we're showing. Yeah. Um, that's so if that's people, a Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So people wanted to attend that. Um, I actually reached out to this professor telling him about the film and he, um, you know, thinking maybe he could attend. Um, I think he's just very busy, but yeah, he, he was very nice, very open and wrote right back. And um, so it looks like a good talk. Yeah, I'm going to try to go to that one. I think that was in the Senior Center newsletter. That's where I have that's, it. I think that's where I saw it first. Yeah. yeah. And it's on the library door, too. That makes sense. You spilled the tea on that one, right? Yeah, I did. I stole it. I stole it. <laughs> um, parking lot issues. And I'm glad you explained that because I definitely want to go, what parking lot this year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I want my parking space Other closer to the store. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, increased connectedness for us, Hadley. We kind of touched on that. Mm -hmm. uh, outreach opportunities at yeah. the Court of Phelps. Um, anything else we want? Any other ideas on that? Regularization of celebratory educational events, February Black History Month, October Indigenous Peoples Day, June LGBTQ Pride, and Juneteenth. I think uh, since I am part of the Cultural Council, mm -hmm. it was uh, the subcommittee um, that was created was, was something that um, was actually presented by me. Um, and we were going to do Diversity Day first, but then another member mentioned um, Patty Learns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reached out to Humera and discussed everything. And that's how I became acquainted with the Juneteenth Festival. So I was thinking about doing that again this coming year, um, participating. So if we need anything to pitch a ride onto that, Mm -hmm. We can definitely speak on that and I can, you know, bring that to Humera and see, you know, if that would be something because I think the bigger we make this event, mm -hmm. the more we can cover and the more people will come out to actually participate. And then we can get more volunteers in Hadley. We can expand on on not just this, but everything in Hadley as a whole children, teenagers, you know, bullying, whatever it may be, this could be a stepping stone for that. Mm -hmm. So do you have or maybe could just review what we've done in the past? Because we have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you mean by regularization. Right. You mean that we commit to something to in observance of these. I think that was one of the things that came out last time. People suggested yeah. that we um, yeah, okay. commit to things that we've done, and then it becomes a pattern, and people recognize that the CDEI does this right. event. So let me see. Let me test my memory here. Black History Month, we... We partnered with the Senior Center a few times and showed movies because they have a movie matinee and we partnered with them mm -hmm. and then we we picked a film consistent with the time right. of a national celebration. So mm -hmm. for in February, 
help me. We showed a oh. wonderful film on um, a, a lost, lost to many people concert in Harlem. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Summer of Soul. Summer, Summer of Soul. Soul. Yes. Yeah, concert series in Harlem. It was the same summer as Woodstock. Mm. But the and it was beautifully filmed at the time. And then I guess there was one TV special, and then all the film just got put in somebody's yeah. attic for decades. Wow. And yeah. nobody knew about it. Nobody knew except about it. all the people who went. And right. And it was actually it wasn't actually a series. Yeah, it, was yeah. Yeah. it, it wasn't weeks. just one day. Yeah. Oh yeah, Summer of Soul. It, it was, was great, and it was. It yeah, was so we did that in February, and it was right. at the senior center. And the seniors, of course, were all alive. It's all the music that we grew we up grew with. with. This music, those oh, people who, so they knew the music. Yeah. They couldn't believe they knew nothing about this. Right. And so it was really, I think, a cool. good Black History Month yeah, film. Where did you get that information from? The we, film, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so the film, the idea, like. We're going to touch on we that. We just one. look for movies right. through Canopy, through the library. Oh, okay. So we go through the library system. I didn't belong. I didn't what? know about it, but Joanne yeah, and Sarah yeah, both knew about it. So we just searched films under Title Black History mm -hmm. and came up with a few and we watched them and then we picked this one because we wanted to look for something that was really interesting. Yes. Yeah. Because but, it's a movie matinee, you know. Right. It's, yeah. and, and uplifting and educational, and so we landed on this film, and it was great. Go ahead, they watched. And this had just come out previous. I had seen it at the Amherst Cinema. That's right. You had out. seen it. That's right. That's why when you yes. brought that up, oh, you got to do that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to look at that. So that is a great pattern of ours to collaborate with this. Yeah. Group, which is what we're doing this coming October as well. That's right. And was it just last year that we showed Gather? Yes. It was Gather a was was yeah, this was, was a film the, about the, the, the spring, foods. The food ways, right? That, yeah. Native American food ways. They Native American food yeah. different groups. There was oh I'm not gonna be able to produce all the names. Okay. The guy who was the chef. And his friend, who was the gardener, who were recreate, you know, revitalizing Apache food ways. Um, the guys with the salmon in the Pacific right. Northwest, right? And the girl whose father was farming the buffalo, yeah. right? Cut memory. And <laughs> I'm sure there was four. I'm always going to be missing one. Mm. It's okay. It's... Anyway, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it was the gather. Try yeah. gather. Try gather. To. Just, just gather. gather. Just gather. That's the name of the film. It might still be a. Yep. But all these people were trying to preserve these traditional foods and and recipes and it it was um I thought it was perfect for this thing. Yeah. It sounds like you guys come up with excellent movies to represent different cultures and struggles and history and, and future as well because this all incorporates the past the present and the future mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what it should be about not just stuck in the past right. showing the struggle yeah. not stuck today but also what the outcome can be mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what i i really yeah. appreciate you guys joining thank you oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah this was i remember was showing the um these um uh, the chef but teaching people the, the the old recipes it reminded me of a trip I went to uh, in Santa Fe, where I went to a, a event in a um, in a uh, restaurant where they was it a restaurant? It's kind of a restaurant gift store, but they the the chef the chefs created the meal. It was all uh, indigenous foods, mm -hmm. but they had the whole story about how they're trying to solve the diabetes problem mm -hmm. and the natives. In the on the reservations and, mm -hmm. and reintroducing the foods that they their ancestors used to live on. Right. Right. You know, that, that's that's why that we, when you mentioned that house. film, I said that's yeah, gonna exactly. that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. So then the LGBTQ Pride in Juneteenth, we also did a film, and that was growing up trans. Oh, trans. Yeah, that was really great. And uh Megan, one of the members, but who can't come just this whole semester, 
um, she she came up with that one. And I couldn't stay for her commentary, but that was an eye opener. Do you know this film? No. Growing up trans. This this was you can all help me out if you want, but um young people, uh several of them before puberty, really just sharing their story about how they uh, are experiencing that they don't identify with the, the gender of their but the, the biological gene, right, yeah, right. yeah, and um, it's just thought provoking and educational. Yeah, and these kids were were suffering. You know the 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 yeah yeah. And it's it so back. sad. It is sad when you can't. I mean, when you cannot be who you want to be because of the ridicule of society and yeah. the harassment. It's so sad. I mean, if it from gender to sexuality to race to culture to color it is all a struggle yeah. and it's not just one it's all mm -hmm. so when you when you when you touch on the subject of diversity and inclusion it's everyone it's senior citizens yeah. it's, it's 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 everyone it's not just a color and that's what everyone mm -hmm. needs to understand that it's not just color it's, it it can be an economical situation that, and that's a key interest of mine the, the the extreme I just more I read okay so I brought with me <laughs> yeah. my, I'm re right now I'm reading this is what I'm reading oh yes <laughs> have you read it no I it. but I yes I I really I mean it just seems that this disparity is getting bigger and bigger yes and what I've read so far he's saying this is way worse in the United States than yes. anywhere yes the amount of wealth yes. And the, it's, and the amount yeah, of power and, is and unbelievable. So yeah, yeah, but all of these areas where we 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 don't accept each other for who we really are, and, but that that's not encouraging. The title alone: poverty by America. <laughs> it doesn't say in America; it says by America, mm -hmm. which which actually says we're the ones causing it. Well, right. It's not. I mean, I'll report later what he has okay. to say. Yeah, but yeah. that, but I don't think that there's a a month for but. If there is ever a chance to, yeah, do some kind of film on, well, that's on those issues, agenda, right? We want to do. We want to address class. Well, this gets yeah. into, and and this isn't on this at all, Crystal. Mm -hmm. But we've been very interested in uh, housing and affordable housing, and the the initiative to try to get the Econo Lodge to be a uh, for low-income housing that ran into snags. Right. I don't think that's over yet. Am I right? It's not no, over. We, the planning board, are investigating 40 yards. Not going to happen this at this fall's meeting, but hopefully, you know, ideally by next spring, we could identify and add to our zoning and make that a 40R, which would make it acceptable by right. So that I don't know if you're aware of what happened, but they were they were they had to apply through the zoning board of appeals, who resoundingly said no and their reasoning was that it was so far from what our standard zoning is they felt why should three of us go against you know 50 years of zoning that i was in the back of the room i wanted to say well take a public vote now but, yeah, so yes, so we're looking at ways to, you know, if we can make, make that work. But yeah, it would have to be something that would need exactly. it would need to pass at at town meeting. But the state is so pro forty R that it doesn't take a two thirds vote; it takes a simple majority, oh. so fifty percent plus one. So I think there's a good chance. In town that it could vote, and mm -hmm. I think that there's probably support for it. I don't think we have to drum up. So, but yes, no, we have to show up. Yeah, they were, as I understood, because this is also out in the paper a lot, was they felt that that should be up to a town meeting vote. Mm -hmm. I get that, but um, mm -hmm. and I especially yeah, not to go too far down. Rabbit hole, but I especially like the 40R concept 
because you know I'm I'm the newest member of the planning board. You know, some of them have been there over thirty years, yeah. and uh, they have a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, um, and I just bring my, you know, life profession of design to it. But um, there is a desire for us. There's a desire by a growing um, sense of the population that we would like to have to encourage some low, uh, some affordable housing. I don't know that we'd call it low income anymore, but anyway, affordable housing. And this 40R, chapter 40R that the state is promoting allows us to basically do what used to be considered illegal spot zoning saying we want this area to be okay but not not a larger zone and what was brought to light at our last or previous um planning board meeting was that the planners brought back the state the state's first offer was well maybe you'd like to do it and they showed like a whole zone all the way along with nine and we just kind of like, you know, I, I can't speak for my other members, but we would be ridden out of town if we opened up that whole, because you think of all the developers that would run in and build hotels or or whatever. And that's not what we've been asked why? to do by our constituents. But, so that's why I think 40R doing it in a, you know, limited area, um, would be what we would like to you know, dip our toe in the pool. Let's get this one project to go ahead. And if the town finds that all the naysayers' arguments are in two or three years, there's no crime in the crap, there's no, yeah. you know, our schools aren't being overrun, our infrastructure isn't over, you know. Police then, aren't being called. Right. Right. Well, that's right. Then that's exactly. Maybe there would be stomach in another five or 10 years for another, you know. So anyway. Yeah, that's true. Could I find me on this topic? Um, one of the things, none of you were at the meeting I was just at, right? You had you peeked in. So I just, right before this meeting, was a meeting about Hadley wanting to be age and dementia friendly. Mm -hmm. And I said, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and I'm going to come here at seven o'clock in. Right. And they're going to feed us. <laughs> so, <laughs> but while there was a lot that interesting thing that one of the things that got my attention was um, just so I attended the meeting and they talked about how the, they had done a survey and the overwhelming majority of people wanted to age in their home. That's not necessarily in their big two-story home they're in now. Okay. They want to age in Hadley, but downsize. Right. And there aren't smaller homes to no. live in. And that and just this morning, we we get the sent the um Springfield Republican every Thursday. And on the front page was an article about the massive wait list for in Massachusetts for housing, low income housing, and how many properties have vacancies sitting not filled. And they're saying the reason is that the that it used to be that every town, let's say Hadley, would conduct their search to fill the 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 uh the vacancies themselves. But because all the people looking for housing I'll take Hadley, I'll take South Hadley, I'll take Amherst, I'll take Belcher, I'll just take something that's close enough to where my kids go to school. So the state decided to make this application pro process a common application, kind of like colleges. Mm -hmm. But because the need is so massive, how do they go through these and pick who gets the two open <laughs> apartments? Right. Um, it was sobering. It said Hadley gave all the towns in this area. Hadley has 10% of their affordable housing units vacant. It turns out to be only a, a few a few units. But the but it listed the wait list for every town. It's like 5,000 people. 
Now, I have to assume that some people are on all of those lists. You know what I mean? They've applied in Hadley and Northampton and Belchertown. Never, but, so they're counted multiple times. Yeah. yeah. But it's like what the Valley CDC people were saying was exactly. that the Econolodge project would be about 50 units and they would expect at least 500 applications. Exactly. At least. At least. At least. My thing is with the senior, you're right. A lot of seniors want to downsize. They want to stay in the town that their children grew up in, that they've worked in, that they've supported. Exactly. Now, if you downsize and there isn't any housing or anything affordable that you can find sustainable to move to the left, to move to the right, then you're not going to stay. And yeah. and that's what I think is a, is a big issue as well. You know, the, the, the senior housing you have in Golden Court, that that's terrible. I mean, when you look at the size of it, it's 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 heart wrenching to me that elderly people live so long. They've accomplished so much in this life. They've seen so much history, and now to live out your last days in, in such a small environment, it, it's sad. And yeah. when when I did hear about the Con Lodge. I said, okay, well, maybe, you know, they can move. And then I found out, okay, how many square footage it was. I said, well, that's not really big enough, but it still gives them an opportunity to decide. Then you have the homes that are built. I'm, I'm not sure. It's off of East Street on that street. And those are condos. And those are for people who have their pension who have the money to have a house built and can live comfortably, but you have mm -hmm. other other elderly people that didn't get that far in life, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's like you said, it, it is it's something. Yeah. And I think there's, you could probably know, you probably know this, but the area down where uh, Nanny's is and the, oh. the, the village barn shops, Oh, don't right. the, the 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 family that owns that hotel don't they wouldn't they don't they want to develop that into like over 55 thousand yeah i'm thinking you know that they were interested in, in in applying for a 40 r zone there there you go um, um so there they, you could, go. they could do you know they could choose a mix between over 55 and affordable housing and yeah. It's it's just interesting to see this. I think if you talk to builders, you know, they'll tell you that to build a property, to build a house now, if you make it small, most of the expenses are all code and they can't make a profit. Right. You know, when my, my husband's second house, he rented he rented the house across from the at the post office and then purchased a house out on Stockwell Road. And it's this little ranch. And, there, and the whole street is these little ranch houses, little starter house or on the other end. Um, and the whole neighborhood you know, where um, I think he used to, he used to live near me. That, but the neighborhood where we jog down, that's off of Huntington, those Meadow Brook or what, you know, yeah, yeah, the, right. the Joe's. There's Highland Circle, there's Meadow Brook. There's, yeah, uh, Joe lives on Monday yeah, Street. Yeah. There's a whole lot. Woodlawn. Woodlawn. Yeah, of Little smaller turn. houses and along hunting uh, yeah huntington or no is it hunting? i think that no, area no that's nor um, um right meadowbrook and and uh yeah, but, yeah it's woodlawn not, it's not it's the only area in town that's that's zoned residential most everything else is is ar so it's agricultural mm -hmm. residential. Yeah. so that allowed them to have smaller lots and, yeah, yeah there's just that one little area the there's yeah these are all the smaller homes i don't i don't see this in the rest of the town yeah well because you know that's what was in part of bill dwyer's talk was that a, a developer who's just building houses on spec has those so many fixed costs that mm. it's they can't get enough for a two or three bedroom house to make it worthwhile it's got to be a five bedroom house wow. or something. it's got to be a big house with a big yeah, right. So it's a so, domino effect from the beginning. Yeah. So we've got it. You, the only way to get smaller homes that are affordable is for the government to, for the town to step in, the oh. state to step in and say, here's how we're going to do it. It, it provides you know, it just, CDC It's a whole other conversation, but it constantly stresses me how many things 
that should be a right for every human yeah. being. But you can't get that unless you participate in a for-profit, right. mm -hmm. like a house right. or health care. Well, also, <laughs> but, our, yeah. our zoning for the town was written 20, 30 years ago, and it was afraid of town being exploited with the colleges on mm -hmm. either, mm -hmm. either sure. side of us. And so the, one of their biggest fears, I think, I mean, I wasn't there, but I'm, one of their biggest fears was probably us, you know, all these farmers just selling and all these developing, you know, just Hadley turning into that that section that I yeah, we were talking about, Meadowbrook and, and Woodlawn, which is not bad, but if the whole town's like that, it would. And what has happened is that our zoning requires that every lot has to be a certain size. So, and to buy that much land, you're looking to build a house, you know, for a developer. And people have come and tried to put tiny houses. Yeah. And uh, before I was there, I had not seen anyone come while I was there, but they've been shot down. I remember that. And that's something little, I, little. I don't, I haven't delved into it to see what the solution is, but you know, I think maybe we can add some more zones where someone could do a tiny house or whatever, you know, there are pluses and minuses and that maybe needs to be re-looked at. Yeah, there's so many factors that are interlinked. Like the, the being afraid of being overrun by students is because the colleges, especially UMass, do not provide enough housing for all their students. Yeah. And then there's another knock on, which is people like me, you know, I'm still rattling around in the house I raised my family in. So it's not available for the next family. And there's a lot of us like that. You know, we like to age in place. It's right. great aging in place, right. except there's another family which would probably like to use that house. Mm -hmm. And they can't. If we can right. downsize. And you can't find another and place I, yeah, to there's live. There's no place that I can move town. to in town that, that, that you can would afford, afford and, yeah. and, yeah. and do a, do a little. And so... Yeah. It's systemic. Is that I think exactly. that's what he's going to tell me. Yeah. It, it is. It really it's is. It's a real it's, systemic thing. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be surprised when you think it's only in lower income areas, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's just different, different type of. Uh, I don't even know what to call it because it's just I just don't understand why, you know why. Can't someone have a choice to live in a smaller house and not have to go to a tiny one bedroom or studio apartment? The screen like one. that is, is that so sad. To me. That that is sad dorm. to me because of the fact that you know you're used to your space, mm -hmm. and to take that away yeah. takes away from your own quality of life. You know, it's just yeah. I don't know. I mean. I don't have the money to provide. You know, I can't say, okay, let's just be adding this amount of money and see what we can do. But then again, I also understand how it is with old money. So they're trying to keep it, like Mark said, yes, and not to have it overpopulated. And also to preserve our farmland, right. which is well, right. a really good point. And, I'm and definitely that, first in line. Right. Right. This is food. And yeah, that's the thing as well. <laughs> when you have yeah. more housing, uh, need more resources, which uses more of the water from the town, and it takes it, away from. There's also a lot of older, multi generation farming families. Yes. And, you know, well, farming and it's scraped by for for generations, and you know they don't have four hundred one k or a pension oh. plan, or you know. So when you talk about building all this, I think what scares them is they see tax dollars mm. to increase our infrastructure. Oh well, then we'll need a bigger sewer system and and more right. schools and more buses and. Yeah, da, 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 da. And, yeah. and how much you know my taxes are already you know right. so it's uh right. there's a lot yeah there's a lot here and you're right this isn't just how no this is mean, not a discussion unique to this town yeah but it's, it's you reminded me of something else i i i listened to some discussions about um affordable housing trusts which we just 
establish one in town so that we can, because um, we have money that we just have to find a way to spend it to promote affordable housing. Mm -hmm. One discussion I heard said that most towns that have it, they have a minimum of seven members and, and the town will say, you have to have one member from this committee, one from this committee, and all these all these different committees, and then they'll have two at large. And what they said is maybe one of those at large should also be someone who's a renter. And I was like, why did you say that? Because everyone else is probably a homeowner. Oh, yeah. And a renter brings a different, you know, you bet. and that's the idea about having that diversity on, yeah, that, that's right. on that trust that everyone brings a different perspective. And that's and, that's good too to have a renter yeah. amongst homeowners because yeah. a homeowner would not actually understand the trials and tribulations a renter right. actually goes through. They just assume their situation is everyone's. Yes. Right. And, right. and, you know, that would be a, a good idea. Yeah. We, we, we live in a society more and more where we're kind of around people in a similar state that we are. Right. And so it not only do we not understand, but we, we kind of forgot. I mean, I don't forget when I was a renter. Right. I, you know, but maybe I do. Right. And, question and even yourself, if we remember what it was like as a renter, it's not the same now. No. Well, there's that too. It's not now, I, what I can tell you is that when I, I was, was college, the amount I, I paid to rent was not what my daughter's paying. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll so, tell you. And as a proportion of what you can earn, it's not the same. Yeah. 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 Cost of living is definitely over yeah. than what they are making and paying mm -hmm. for a job. It's terrible. It's, mm -hmm. it's really a recession happening. And, and that's another thing that I feel sorry for the uh, elderly because not it, it's not just employment that's going down the the, mm -hmm. the um hourly wage it's also social security yeah. it, you know it's a lot that's being taken away and medical as yeah. you stated yeah. the medical is is also dwindling for the elderly so it's yeah. really it's it's a circle yeah. never ending circle so <laughs> i was looking at the clock i think we have about 8 minutes left i'll leave about 90 seconds for you know going through the dates of our future meeting and adjournment and maybe a minute or so for reflection closing reflections does anyone have open agenda or new business if not we could tackle the third parking lot issue but if anyone had any no, I threw that all into that discussion. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> because um, I think the third issue there, I, uh, re recommendations for strength and communication of town meeting to promote increased attendance and benefit better from public. Uh, correct me if I'm misspeaking, but I think one of the things we touched on, what I think that's about, is that we often don't know when the town meeting is, and it's hard to find out. Oh, I know I've gone digging and digging and looking for it on the town calendar where I expect it to be. And it, October it, seems, it seems like they don't post it until like mm -hmm. a week or two before. You know, I want to plug it into my yeah. schedule so I don't schedule something else then. Yeah, well, it's October 26th. Okay. Now. But, but but I think but, the one in May but, but is, goal, is already booked. I think right. I think these dates are pre-selected. So but goal, you're right. So was, how to find is there a way? You know, if you're in town hall, if you're working there, you're in the conversations that guide where that what date that's going to fall on. Mm -hmm. You know about it, and you know about it probably a month before it gets published. You know, there's some ways that we could let people know to save that date. Yeah. I mean, there is that town email list. I get an email lately. I've been getting one every week telling me what's expected on the construction on route. Yeah, I get that too. I yeah, get so the one about yeah. Yeah. epilitis. I've gotten them about other things that are of interest to people in town. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like there should be an APB when, as soon as they set the date for a town meeting. Or even if they would say that it's not set for sure because there's some things to you can say at this point we're looking at this date or this date because I would imagine that they pin, pin it down to two dates. 
You know, it's what Thursdays, right? Yeah, but I think it they I don't know. Maybe he knows. You it looks like he got the calendar up, but at least but that's under community events on the town site, Mark. Yeah, it, so it, yeah, it, so it is up now. But if I wanted to know in for May. To, in August when the October one was, mm -hmm. they don't know yet. I think they do but, because I I mean I've heard I've gotten town meeting dates just from places where you're mentioned this will be mentioned town meeting oh when is it and this is when he did i think the select board knows they probably know when the may one is yeah because it's always in may and, and it's always a thursday and it's probably the third thursday and because so it's, sarah's point is maybe that goes out on the next or whatever that is there's a right it's next that there's a I get emails with lately it's been traffic updates. Right. This is what's yeah. this is what's coming this week with yeah. the Route Nine construction because I don't know who manages that next week. Like somebody puts out, you know, they'll tell you there's a road closed tomorrow because of a water main break. You know, right. These are the kind of things yeah, that which are good to know. Um, and uh, if you're not aware of it, uh, yeah, there's probably that? it's probably a way to find it on the town website. October 26th is the next oh, one. Oh, Nixle? I think yeah. it's NIXLA. On the town website. Uh, I'm guessing that's where I found it. I don't know who told me about it. I think I got invited, or maybe it was at a town meeting when I, and you, you I seem to remember you have to send, like, send a text there, and then they confirm, and then you, I, I can't remember, it was a process I had to go through. But you saw this on the town website. I don't think so. I oh. think it might have been some kind of flyer I got at the town meeting oh, or something. Okay. Some, I, I so would imagine if you contacted just the, so the town clerk's office. I can send this to everybody. So there's an example of this Nixel. It's it's like a listserv. And, yeah, and yeah. when you join yeah. it, you get their email oh, oh, notifications. A, okay. Yeah. There was a telephone. I'll send this to everyone. So I'm good, Mark. I got. I get it already. Too, if it's in the right. Time. Still got some email. Yeah, they come from Town of Hadley. Oh, there it is. Yeah, health advisory. Yep. Health advisory should for people who may be traveling. Mm -hmm. Comes from oh. Town of Hadley. I just sent it to okay. your. You get the ashes in between. You don't get that. Email. I just forwarded that email to you, Crystal. Okay. So you'll have that, and that should have links on it. Okay. okay. You get or or hopefully get here. It tells you how any to get kind of it. advisory. Okay. And at any point, you can unsubscribe if you want. That would be a great way to to put out town meeting dates. Yeah. 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 What does it say? Who? Well, I'm looking here, Mark, to see where it says message sent to Nexel. Go to nexel.com. I'm just wondering if it will. I find it handy. Yeah. I I just can't remember. No, I forwarded it to my my in laws and oh, here this is my buddy who drives from South Amherst to Northampton and has to drive through Hadley. Mm -hmm. I sent it to him so he knows what, what the weekly. Well, this is interesting. Avoid this road, avoid that bridge. If you go to nexel.com and type in your zip code, it shows all their messages. Oh. oh so yeah. that's another place you could go as so go to archive. Yep. Yep. Look at but that. Somewhere we, we should be able to find out. That if, the town shouldn't make it so hard for people to be in touch, should they? Right. Right. It should be right on the front page. Of well, I don't think they're actually trying to make it hard. They're just no, I know. not making the effort to make it no, easier. Probably so some, not making enough. some committee needs to make right. it happen. <laughs> well, I think you brought this up, Mark, initially as a point of inclusion. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. That when things are not, I mean, I, I imagine some people know when town meetings are all the time because they're in an inner circle. Yeah, sure. yeah. And so I think you brought it up that and they take it for granted that, that everybody knows, knows because yeah. they know because the people right. they know all know because they breathe it all day. Yeah. yeah. And, and so and there's why. not an understanding that there are some people on the outer part of the circle that right. don't know. So um, and some of those people need weeks to plan. Yeah. Yeah. And those people that do know are the regular 100 that show up for every meeting. That's right. I don't <laughs> care. 
Well, um, not to play the heavy, but so like, maybe we can find out when the when I'll the, leave in this in the maybe. parking lot, okay? Yeah, okay. okay. And maybe yeah. we can come up with something we yeah. want to do about it. How yeah. does that sound? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, if we have uh, this, this would be my last call for new business or open agenda. We covered all that. No. Nope. All right. So we will go to closing reflection. Anyone want to offer? I'm it's just, a delight having a new member. I'm just, yeah. and I'm just happy and to be here. I just love and hearing I'm, all of your passions. Yeah, I'm just happy. I'm writing down your book title. I'm like, because I'm about to do like a 13 or 16 yeah. hour drive to Illinois. So I'm like, oh, if I can get Poverty by America on audiobook, that would be great. Yeah, 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 probably as probably yeah. there. But I am I am thrilled to be here and I want to thank everyone for welcoming me with big arms. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. I really do. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I will do anything to make sure that the town is represented well and we all have an understanding of what we need to achieve and accomplish. So I'm I expand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much. Um. Thank you, Crystal. With that, I will go to nine dates for upcoming meeting. Our next one is the 19th of October. Should be the third Thursday. Is that uh -huh. what we usually do? Uh -huh. Yeah, third Thursday. Yep. I'm and breaking them in my book. The dates are on the agenda. And with that, I would ask if anyone wanted to make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Okay. And a second. Yes. All in favor. Okay. okay.